Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some cards that have gone up in price and we are seeing some movement on the Ixalan dinosaurs. This is not the only dinosaur, but it is a good example of, I think, casual players. If Wizard of Coast is correct and most the majority of Magic players are so casual that they don't even have never been to FNM before and they feel too... Uh, they feel like it's too aggressive at FNM or too competitive, which some FNMs are feel it, some of FNMs all it takes is one deuce back, right? And then uh, everyone becomes a deuce back. And I've seen that I've seen that happen. But other FNMs are very f fun and casual. No one really cares about winning. I remember the one locals I went to, everyone had like an ally deck. And it was like, who could build the best ally deck? And that was because we all agreed to do it. And, you know, allies are incredibly cheap, right? Obviously, I ran a Draena ally deck. But even then, it wasn't that expensive. And if everyone's cool with it, then that's what you do. And then price doesn't become a barrier to entry, where it's, for a lot of people, it is. I will talk about this card. It is a $44 foil, a $9.50 non-foil from Champions of Kamigawa. There's still some very cheap booster packs of this set. And this set is all about legendary creatures. And there's the ability to buy old collections and bulk of this. So when people typically buy old collections, they're not super excited. Oh, champions, betrayers, saviors, nice. That's not what people are like super excited about. They're excited about Lorwyn, Shadowmoor, Eventide. Those are sets people know have always had value. They have consistently had value in the past and they will have value in the future. Champions, Betrayers, before EDH, this was considered one of the worst sets value-wise of all Magic. But then EDH with all of its legendary things, a lot of the cards are spiked. But if you're buying a collection from someone in the period, if you, for instance, if I played... If I didn't play Magic and I had my old collection, I wouldn't think any of these cards would be valuable because they wouldn't make any sense to me why they would be. Uh, next, McKinney Mask. Uh, we have this Pirate. I think it is valuable because it's a Pirate with flying, so it has evasion. And there is that Pirate Commander card, Admiral Beckett Bass, I believe is his name. Or her name. I think it's a guy, right? Beckett Bass has to be a guy, but I, I haven't looked at the image. And pirates are flying that can hit your opponent. That, those are pretty good. Pirates typically do not have evasion. Uh, sacrificing a permanent, that's not bad, but a permanent can be a land. It's just overall not the best card, but it does. it is a pirate with flying. So there you go. Phasing. Okay, let's talk about phasing. Uh, phasing is back. What has been very interesting is all these older cards with these unique abilities like phasing and having people have forgot about them, right? So there's a two big selling points in this card. A, it's old and B, it's on a reserve list. That being said, someone dug it up and said, oh, wow, phasing is back. Phasing is actually on one of the most popular commander cards. I think it's Tefri's Protection. It's the commander card that's $30 right now. And for good reason, because people are like, oh, cool, that's phasing. I wonder what else gives cards phasing. Oh, this one does. Oh, it's on a reserve list. Oh, it's old. Cannot be reprinted. And then that is when a bio happens. I actually own a Lisa playset of this card just randomly. And I'm, I mean, oh, great. You, owe, you own the card. How are you going to get rid of it? So one of the main things, I'm waiting for packages to come to me and then I'll open them and I'll show you on the two cards I'm speculating on. I'm not like going all in on these two cards, but I, f I feel very confident my packages are not delivered because I think of the f obviously the hurricane and then the flood after the hurricane. And you guys will be surprised what two cards I picked. Uh, they currently are in standard, but they're going to rotate out. And my plan is to continue to buy them. Just like Filia, just like Malera. They are my Filia and they are my Malera. I'll put it that way. 
So it may leave me a comment section below if you guys can guess what it is. Maybe we'll play a guessing game because there's two of them, right? I have keyed in on two cards that I really have fallen in love with, and they're not, they're very cheap. They are incredibly cheap cards. And I will pull the orders from TCG Player as soon as I receive them. I ordered them on Sunday. I have, uh, one of them has tracking, the other two do not for whatever reason. So I'm hoping it does not get lost. The one with tracking is delayed in Dallas. Otherwise, it would already be here. Uh, which is unfortunate that my mail is now being delayed. And hopefully Amazon can deliver it because I ordered a flashlight for <laughs> Hurricane. And I tried to uh, prime ship it two days. It didn't work. There was a hurricane. <laughs> now I know. And it's been delayed a ton. Anyway. Ghostal Dirk. Free. Double white, double blue. <laughs> the thing costs seven for a four four first strike. Creatures with island walk may be blocked as if they did not have this ability. Yeah, I guess it's good against Murfolk, but are you. If a Murfolk deck cannot kill you by turn. I mean, assuming you played as turn nine because you're not going to mana drop every turn and just curve into it, right? <laughs> like, that would just be insane. And that would be a terrible strategy. <laughs> a terrible strategy to have. It's just, I mean, it's legends, it's old, it's on the reserve list. Not, there's no other logic behind it. Here's one that I love, and it's because he was so low. One of my key things I truly believe is, unless the Planeswalker has been reprinted to Oblivion in such as a dual deck, Planeswalkers that are 4 to $5 or 2 to $3, unless their name is Tilbolt, really, really difficult for them to remain at that price. And the reason is because the supply dries up, maybe there's a dragon deck, which there is now, people want the new Planeswalker, the Planeswalker rule changes, now you can have both Sharkhorns out. Sharkhorn, you can even have Sharkhorn the Mad, because you have five color dragons. Sharkhorn the Mad is, what is he, red, black? Yeah, you can have a black, That you can have the black version of Planeswalker out as well. You can have the regular Sharkhorn, uh, you have the, the green red Sharkon, which is, I think, Sharkon Vol. So you get multiple Sharkons out, and it's all kind of dragon themed. So, honestly, like when I see a Planeswalker at 2 to $4, unless it's really crappy, like Dolphin Bond is really crappy. I'm not going to lie. But even Narset is like $10 again, and people were really down on her, and I knew that eventually she would rise and she would be where she is today. Cameo is a good example. All right, the dark, um, I'm here to tell you the dark sucks. There's no other, like, yeah, I think Maze of If was in the dark. Blood Moon was in the dark. Those two are exceptions, right? And even at the time, they weren't, Maze of If was always considered pretty good, but Blood Moon was like, why would anyone play this at the time? So Frankenstein's my monster, Lav Tex, I'll just summarize it by saying it's not good. And a lot of these things are spiking, and it's they're not good and not, not even good art in my opinion this is not something i would give to a friend so the narwhals you know they know i like magic a lot of my friends who do not play magic know i like magic and if you give them a narwhal they'll be like oh cool narwhal and they can kind of understand it right but if you give them a frankenstein's monster there's no second date Anyway, Riptide Director from Legions. You know what? Legions was a crappy set. It was just the worst set <laughs> design ever. It was all creatures. I remember it well. It was like creature spell, like, but then like you had to morph them up. It was like ridiculous. It didn't make any sense. But this one took a while to spike, but it clearly is very good because you draw a card for each wizard if you control. The previous problem was there was not enough good wizards that you would want to make an EDH deck. Now there's lots of them because there's an entire deck that you can buy out of the box and have a bunch of them. So it goes up in price. When you look at speculation, there are things that are very that are just so obvious, right? This is something you look at and say, okay, there's a wizard commander deck. Would they enjoy this card? Yeah, they're going to enjoy this card. Maybe I should buy a few of these. Maybe you should. And then there's some stuff that's not so obvious that I think is just like BS, right? Anything from Legends and Reserve List. 
that went from two dollars to twenty is the it's it is what it is, right? I I will tell you that the narwhals I had were semi difficult to move, and I say semi. I think most people bought it as a joke. I did move enough to recoup and make a prop quote profit, assuming my time had a zero cost, which it doesn't. But um, I think most people just wanted the novelty of it because they asked me to sign it. I still have a ton of narwhals, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to give them out if you, if you guys want. Anyway, bye guys.